Welcome to another episode of Prostos Parkietu. I'm your host, Grzegorz Szymiończyk, and my guest today is Thomas Shepard. He's the chief execu- executive officer at Capture Thera- Therapeutics, a biotech company based both in Poland and Switzerland, which is getting ready for an IPO at Warsaw Stock Exchange. Thomas, welcome to our show. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm glad to be here. Uh, we are going to speak about Captor's upcoming IPO, and it might be difficult without delving into what Captor is doing. However, I suggest that we skip the technical details and ask our audience to check the company's documents to learn more about technical aspects of uh, of your business. Uh, Thomas, Captor Therapeutics is developing drugs using TPD technology. This is an uh, abbreviation for targeted protein degradation. Last year, three biotech companies which uh, have apparently a similar profile, uh, did initial public offerings in the US. Uh, this suggests that Captor could also tap uh, the US market. So why did you decide to have an IPO uh, in Poland and did you consider uh, going public elsewhere? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. But the, the, two com- the three companies who went public in the US are uh, about two years older than Captor. Um, so they're working in the same area, but they're more established and they've been U.S. since their formation. Uh, Captor is a Polish company, uh, even though we also have a base in Switzerland. Therefore, for us, a logical first step was to go on the Warsaw Stock Exchange. Um, uh, we saw that the market was interested in our company, uh, and we also think that it's a good place for us to start. Does it mean we won't in the future perhaps look at other avenues internationally? Uh, to enhance our footprint. Uh, but do you think that the, the Polish market is um, developed enough to for you to to, to provide uh, uh, enough attention to what you're doing and, and, and enough understanding to, to, to what, what you're doing? Do you think that you could, uh, to, for instance, have better, better uh, conditions from the IPO elsewhere on the more developed market? Potentially, you could uh, consider that if we were already established in the U.S., uh, the U.S. is known for having a more liquid stock market. That is true. Uh, but the reality is uh, to, to have a, a NASDAQ IPO would take a long time of planning, would require a lot of uh, time and effort to, to, to establish a, a presence in the U.S. prior to the IPO. So for our perspective, we felt the most important thing for Captor was to get our projects, our drug candidates, moving uh, through into development. And the most uh, efficient way of starting that process and getting the funds we need was the Warsaw Stock Exchange. NASDAQ, perhaps in a a few years' time, could be an interesting option to go even further. But for the moment, we think uh, the the ideal solution, even though it's a relatively new market for biotech, is is the Warsaw Stock Exchange. Uh, and do you actually, because you mentioned that you need the financing to, to develop your projects, but is it actually the case? Uh, so far, you have been using mainly grants, I understand, to finance yourself. Uh, and uh, why couldn't yes. you keep on, on using this source of capital? Well, we've been using a mixture of private investment and grants, but you're right. Um, this has been a big help to us, the support from the Polish government and the EU government has been a big help to establish our uh, pipeline of five projects. But the reality is that these projects are now moving forward into the more expensive phases of drug development. And whilst we still have grant funding, and this is very remains very important, we want to supplement this with the funds from an IPO so that we can go faster towards the realization of uh, collaborations and revenues. And could you and could you please briefly describe your offering? I mean, how many shares are you selling? Uh, how are you pricing them? And what size of the IPO are you targeting? Yes, well, obviously, um, the, any any of your viewers should uh, refer to the prospectus as you mentioned at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the interview. But we are uh, planning uh, not more than eight hundred seventy one thousand five hundred shares, uh, new issues of shares in, in the offering. Um, and we expect an institutional tranche in the range of 80% with 20% retail. That is the kind of project we're looking at. Uh, and in terms of, um, uh, sorry, I just want to make sure I get the numbers right. 
Um, in, in, in terms of the size of the offering, we would expect the offering to be something in the range of 120 to 150 million zloty. And should the, the offer go very well uh, in terms of uh, the level of interest from uh, both the uh, public and the institutions, uh, we would also uh, consider a, um, a country offering uh, which which would be available of around 198,000 more shares, which could be offered if the interest in the new share issue uh, is is uh, exhausted. Uh, and how how would the ownership structure uh, of the company change after the IPO? Well, essentially, the new IPO, uh, IPO shareholders would own around just a slightly less than 25% of the company. Okay. Well, you have mentioned that um, you are issuing new shares. This is the G series. Uh, but apart from that, there are seven other series of your shares that are going to be publicly traded, and two shares, two series of preferred shares uh, A and E will remain private. Uh, who owns those uh, private uh, shares? Preferred. That's essentially the founders of the company. That's essentially the founders of the company, um, okay. uh, particularly the scientific founders. Um, and so on. And that was something that was very important for the company to be able to make sure that we can keep the, the, the good direction uh, for the strategy and the science of the company. So that was the reason for that. That was essentially the founding group. Uh, how, how are you planning to, uh, to use the proceeds from the IPO? Uh, well, the, the most important part um, is, the, um, uh, is in terms of um, making our R&D projects advance towards the milestones that we've specified in the prospectus. Because um, we, are, we are, have uh, five projects, two are quite advanced, and we're expecting to get a couple of those projects towards clinical trials in, in, the, coming, in the coming two years. Uh, therefore, around between 75 and 88 million zloty will be used for that focus on advancing our drugs uh, to the to an extent where we could uh, expect to uh, commercialize them through a collaboration. Um, secondly, we have we have four other areas where we're spending money, 20 to 25 million zloty in terms of expanding the scientific infrastructure. We have primarily in Wrocław. Uh, we have six to eight to 8.4 million zloty, which is for business development and intellectual property. Obviously, our patents are very important. And then we have allowed between 8 and 12 million zloty for bringing in additional internationally expert, expert talent because we're heading to a complex development uh, in the company as we go towards the clinic and eventually the market. And then finally, we will, are allowing between 11 and 15 million zloty to increase our presence in Basel, where we, uh, we, we have a, a facility which is close. Uh, the major pharmaceutical hub in, in Basel. So that is the uh, split, really, of how we plan to use the funding. You have you have mentioned that the, some of your projects are quite advanced. When would you expect your first revenues? Well, the 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 first thing to say is the business model of Captor is 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 quite special, in that we will do not intend to take any of our products to the market. We will enter into partnering collaborations uh, with uh, large pharmaceutical companies sometime between preclinical development and early clinical. So this is really in the, in, the, in the period around 18 to 24 months from now for our pipeline projects. But we have a second opportunity for revenues. Uh, we've already signed one collaboration in December um, with a Japanese company called Sosi Heptaris, which is on the Tokyo, Tokyo Stock Exchange. We've signed a collaboration with them already, but it's a very early collaboration where we combine our knowledge and protein degradation with their knowledge on certain specialist diseases and targets. So we expect to be able to conclude additional uh, uh, collaborations of that, that kind in the next 12 to 18 months which would bring additional revenues in the short term, particularly it would support our R&D. Uh, and additionally, we would receive milestone payments as those products move uh, to uh, through preclinical development and clinical development. Uh, your, co your company boasts uh, a unique uh, drug discovery platform. Uh, and I'm wondering whether 
how 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 can you use this uh, asset? How can you leverage this uh, this platform? Is it something that you can use uh, to sell R and D service to the third parties, or is it purely for your own uh, purposes? No, in fact, it's we don't intend to sell any services. However, what we intend to do is we currently have five programs which we own, which we will be developing uh, through to the clinic, as I mentioned. But the big advantage of targeted protein degradation is that something like 80% of all the potential drug targets uh, are currently unused. The entire pharmaceutical industry only uses 20% of drug targets. Targeted protein degradation can access 80% of drug targets. Therefore, we believe that many pharmaceutical companies would uh, want to work with us to be able to develop new drugs for these undrugged targets, which they are called. So it's, there's a big opportunity for collaboration, not for services, but to work jointly with pharma, where we help them uh, address a disease that they are interested in, and we provide protein degradation, but we have a joint uh, share of the benefits of that project in the future. Uh, when the pharmaceutical company goes to the market, we will be paid uh, milestones, royalties, upfront payments, etc. Uh, could you describe what are what, what are the risks to your, risks to your business and model? And are there any projects that you already had to kill because they weren't promising? Yes, obviously biotechnology for particularly for any investor who's invested in biotechnology, uh, they must understand that sometimes projects are stopped and sometimes projects uh, are successful, and um, because it's science, it's research. Uh, but the, the, the rewards are very high, so which is why people uh, continue to invest. And we have indeed, uh, just at the turn of the year, we decided to stop one of our projects uh, because it was not fulfilling the needs um, and, our, and it allows us to focus on the five projects that we're continuing. So, so it's, it's, it's one of these things that uh, projects can go better or worse than planned and it's just what biotech is about. Uh, but we think it's important for us to have a good number of projects, which is why we have five, because if one project even succeeds, it is generally a very highly rewarded uh, by the pharmaceutical industry. For example, my last company, Kaimab in the UK, was recently uh, sold to Sanofi in January for 1.4 billion, but the total investment in the company was only 200 million. Okay. Um, and do you have any direct competitors, uh, that is companies which are developing exactly the same drugs or um, the, the same type of drugs? Uh, no, in fact, that, that's, 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 that's an interesting question. There are companies who are using pro degradation, uh, and we mentioned the companies who are on NASDAQ. Uh, we consider these our peers, but they're not actually competitors because none of their drugs are competing with our drugs. So we, we as far as we're aware, the big advantage of protein degradation is that it allows us to work on new drug targets that have never been used before by the pharmaceutical industry. So we are not aware of any protein degrader drugs that address the same targets that we are working on. Of course, in some diseases, there are multiple ways of treatment. So for example, in liver cancer, surgery could be a competitor to what we're doing. And there are some approved drugs which extend life by a, a, a period of a few months to maybe one or two years. But we are hoping to have something which is totally different. And therefore, we would uh, be, because we're working on a totally new approach in liver cancer, which we think uh, will be successful, but we will only know when we get to clinical trial. Thank you very much, Thomas, for your uh, answers. Uh, our guest today was Thomas Shepard. He's a, a chief executive officer of Captor Therapeutics, which is getting ready for an IPO at Warsaw Stock Exchange. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and for your interest.